Welcome to STEM Family Camp. Today, we will be taking our investigation skills for a spin. Literally, we will be building some devices to explore the effects of centripetal force along with its partner, centrifugal force. These forces can help us to defy gravity. My name is Grace, and along with the rest of our STEM family team, I will be guiding you through this investigation into the forces push and pull on spinning objects. Our devices are fun to build and even more fun to use, so let's get started. Doing an investigation scientifically is very different than just playing around. Physicists investigate the behavior of matter in a very deliberate way. They are careful to set up experiments by changing only one variable while every other factor is held as constant as possible. In our first experiment, we will use a simple spinner device to observe how centripetal forces work differently on different objects. In the second experiment, we will build a centripetal force generator that will help us to measure and compare the effect of centripetal force on different objects. Your final challenge is to determine how to spin glasses of water on a centripetal force board without soaking yourself. Like all scientists, you will test out your ideas and change your design when it best suits your needs. Scientists always write down their investigation choices so that they can remember their alterations. You have data charts in your camper instructions that you can use, and then tape into your STEM family journal as a record of your work. Don't be afraid to test out your ideas, and don't forget to write them down. Have you ever spun an object like a tennis ball on a string? You can imagine what would happen if the string were to break. The tennis ball would go flying off! but the string holds it in place so that the tennis ball spins in a circle. Because the tennis ball is spinning, it is being held in circular motion by the centripetal force the string exerts on the tennis ball. When the tennis ball moves in a circle, its velocity changes direction. Since the velocity is continuously changing, this also means the tennis ball is accelerating and there is a net force. Centripetal force is a force that makes an object move or accelerate towards the center of a circle. The centripetal force acting on the ball is constantly pulling the ball towards the center of the circle where you are holding the string. This keeps the ball spinning in a circular motion. Engineers use centripetal force when they design roller coasters. Centripetal force keeps the roller coaster cars from falling off the track when they speed up or on the loop. There is another force to consider when we examine the forces on a spinning object. If you are in the roller coaster car when it's going around the loop, then you are the object being affected. You are not feeling pulled towards the center of the circle. Instead, you feel the force driving you away from the center, holding you in the car. This force is called centrifugal force. So, whenever you have centripetal forces, you also have centrifugal forces. For our first experiment, we are going to test out centripetal force and learn how it works by creating a centripetal spinner. For this experiment, you will need three balloons, a hex nut, a penny, and three balloon clips. If you want to test out more objects, you can also prepare some round objects of different sizes. Maybe a penny, a dime, a quarter, or maybe some hex nuts of different sizes. The first thing you're going to do is grab one of your balloons and stretch it out. You can do this by stretching it with your hands or blowing it up and then letting the air out. Then take one of your round objects and put it in your balloon. We will be starting with a penny. You will need to stretch out the opening of the balloon so that you can get the object in without tearing. Make sure that the object makes its way all the way to the large part of the balloon. Once you've done this, blow up your balloon and secure it with a balloon clip. Now it's time to test out your centripetal spinner. Hold the top of the balloon in the palm of your hand and start to move the balloon in a circle until the object begins to spin inside. Remember, it may take a few spins to get it moving. Once it starts spinning, Stabilize the balloon by holding it in place and observe. Where's the best spinning location in the balloon? Is it the top, the middle, when you hold it sideways? What sound do you hear? Why do you think it's making that sound? How long does it take for the object to stop spinning and moving? Record your observations in table one. Then repeat this experiment with the other object. You can even try it out with a different object of your choosing with your extra balloon. If you choose to test an extra object, write it in the blank third row of table one. Pause the video now to follow our procedure for making and testing a centripetal spinner. Now that we've observed centripetal force in action, it's time to measure and compare how centripetal and centrifugal force affect different objects. Remember, if we have centripetal force, we also have centrifugal force. In order to do this, we will be creating and testing a centripetal force generator. For this experiment, you will need a jello cup, 
two binder clips, two feet of string, a 16 ounce solo cup, a clean marble, a penny, duct tape, a ruler, and scissors from home. So first I'm gonna measure out two feet worth of string. I will grab the two binder clips and put them on either side of the cup. Then I will grab the string and tie a knot on either side of the loops. Finally, use several pieces of duct tape to secure the binder clips in place so they do not move. We need to make sure that everything is secure, so use as much tape as you think you need. Then, once you've finished taping your binder clips, tug on the string to make sure everything is in place and not moving. Now we're going to get your items ready to be tested. Grab your jello cup, marble, and penny. Open your jello cup and push the marble in so that it's positioned half in and half out of the jello. Then do the same thing with your penny so that it is half in and half out of your jello. There is a diagram in your journal to help you out. Make sure both your marble and penny are secure in the jello. Once you've done this, use your ruler to measure in centimeters how far into the jello each item is. You will measure from the top of the jello to the bottom of the object. Write these measurements next to table two. These are your starting points. You'll need these when you make your graph. Finally, place your jello cup in your centripetal force generator so that it sits nicely in the larger cup. Now you're ready to test it out. If you're not already outside, you should probably head outside for the test portion of this experiment. You want to make sure you have plenty of room to do your test. All right, it's time to test your generator. Hold on to the string of your centripetal force generator and swing it above your head 10 times like you see us doing in this video. Make sure to keep count so you don't go over. After 10 spins, take the jello cup out of your generator and use your ruler in centimeters to measure how far your marble and penny moved. You will want to measure from the bottom of each object just like you did before we started. Then record your measurements in table two. You're going to repeat this process 10 times and in the end, you will have spun your generator 100 times over your head. Once you've recorded all of your measurements in table two, you're going to want to graph your results. Here's an example of how to graph your data. Feel free to use a different color for your marble and penny so you can better see the results. Remember, my numbers are going to be very different than yours. So let's say I just finished doing my penny test five times. To start out my graph, I'm going to need to graph the starting distance that we measured before we started. So I'm going to go to the zero at the bottom because we didn't do any spins yet. And I got a measurement of 0.5 centimeters, half a centimeter. So I go to the zero at the bottom and I go up along the side because 0.5 is half of one. And I'm going to mark a dot there because that's my starting distance. Then after 10 spins, I measured one centimeter. So I'm going to go to the 10 at the bottom and up to the one along the side and mark my dot there because after 10 spins, I got one centimeter. For 20 spins, I got 1.25 centimeters. So I'm going to go to the bottom, move over to 20 and up to 1.25, which I think would be about right there. Make a dot right there. For 30 spins, I got 1.5. So I'm going to go up to the one and a half, make a dot. For 40 spins, I got 1.75. Down to the 40, up to the 1.75, and make my mark. And then for 50 spins, I got two centimeters. So I'll make my dot here where the 50 at the bottom and the two on the left-hand side meet. Then to finish my graph, I'm going to draw a line connecting all of my dots. And there's my graph. Once you've graphed the data for both objects you tested, compare your results. What is the pattern that you see? How much of a difference do you see between the objects? Now that you've watched us test our centripetal force generators and record our data, it's your turn. Pause the video now to follow our procedure for this experiment. Are you feeling daring? We just spun jello above our heads without it falling on us. 
Now let's try it with some water. We're going to use everything we've learned about centripetal and centrifugal force to build a centripetal force board and spin water in the air. Let's see how much water you can swing around without spilling. For this experiment, you will need water, four binder clips, eight feet of string, corrugated cardboard, four nine ounce plastic cups, scissors, and a ball for an optional extension challenge. The first thing we need to do in this experiment is build our centripetal force board. You will need to grab your piece of cardboard and four binder clips. Take one binder clip and clip it to the upper left of the cardboard square, not on the corner, but right next to the corner. Then rotate the cardboard square and do this for each of the sides until all four binder clips are attached. Then you're going to fold down the metal arms on the binder clips that are facing you like you see us doing right now. Once you do that, flip your cardboard over and place it on the table. At this point, the side of the cardboard that is facing up should have all of the metal arms facing out. Now I'm going to cut out two pieces of string that are three feet. Similar to your centripetal force generator, these are going to be the handles for your centripetal force board, so make sure they're equal in length. Now, take one of the strings you just cut and tie it to two of the binder clip arms that are next to each other on the board. Make sure you knot them as tight as possible. Then, take the other string and tie it to the two remaining binder clip arms on the board. Once you've attached your string handles, test them out to make sure that they're sturdy. Now head outside because you're ready to test out your centripetal force board. And this might get messy. I know it did for us. Once you're outside, fill your four plastic cups with water. You might want to have some extra water on hand too for later. Then take one of your cups and place it in the center of your board. Remember, centripetal force pulls items towards the center. And then draw a diagram of your setup on table three. Now it's time to test it out. Start by gently swinging the board back and forth. Then, as you feel more confident, make your swings bigger and bigger. When you're ready to swing your board in a complete circle above your head, go for it. A straight arm usually helps. How did it work? It's okay if you got wet. We did too. It's all part of the scientific process. Record your observations in table three and feel free to try it again to see if you can get your swing just right. When you think you've mastered one cup or you're just ready to test out more, try your board with two cups, then three, and then four. As you go through the experiment, remember to record your observations and diagrams in table three. Feel free to do as many tests as you like. Science is all about multiple trials. Don't forget to document your observations in table three. What arrangement worked best? Did the cups fall off? Which one was easiest? Remember, scientists always record any changes they make to help them get the best results. Thank you for joining us for today's investigation into centripetal and centrifugal force. I hope you had fun. Keep watching the video for an extra extension challenge. Pause the video now to follow our procedure for building and testing a centripetal force board. Do you want an extra centripetal force board challenge? Let's turn it into a projectile throwing device. Make a mark in the center of your board, lay it flat on the ground, and place a ball on the mark you just made. Now pick up your board and start swinging it like you did with the water cups. As you get more confident, start swinging it in complete circles above your head several times. This will help you pick up speed and force. Then, when you're ready, let go of one of the strings and propel your ball forward. How far does it go? Is it moving in the direction you wanted it to? Can you get it to hit a target? What happens if you change the size of the ball you're using? Be an engineer and make improvements to solve these issues or make it even more of a challenge. Then let us know what happens. STEM Family Camp is a product of iBio, delivering industry-led STEM programs for teachers and students to inspire a new generation of innovators and entrepreneurs. To learn more about iBio and its programs, visit www.ibio.org.